Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Other Side of Addiction. I am your host, Al Richards, and uh, my gosh, we've got the honor of having Robert Scott Bell on the show again for the second time within, what, a month and a half or so? Has it been that soon? I don't know. You had me in the it's, back there. I couldn't get like... out. So I had, <laughs> uh, finally, you let me out. I'm back on the show. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, it's an honor to have you back. It it's really is, Robert. Um, I know when you were here last time, Mel was the guest host, and mm-hmm. I want to introduce the lovely Mel. So, Mel, thank you again for being here Thanks with for us. Having... <clears throat> Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. And... Um, I know after our show last time, we were like, my gosh, we could have kept this thing going for another <laughs> hour. And I was watching Mel during the show, and I think she wrote like a page and a half worth of notes. And some of the stuff we were talking about, I took some notes, and I went home, and I was researching it. I really do believe, and I don't know how the rest of our audience feels, but I really do believe that healthy eating habits mm-hmm. can help us in so many different ways. Even in into the addiction, um, we had a gal on who was from, um, oh my gosh, Emily. I'm trying to remember where Emily was from. I don't even remember where Emily from. And she was a guest on, on Laban's mm-hmm. show. And I think she was just a guest on your show, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I think I had an Emily on recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> yes. she was telling me that uh, she was going to be a guest on your show. And we were talking about how even healthy eating habits, they've, it's, it's helped a lot of kids who have autism and different things like that. So we were talking before the show about all the metals and all the crap that we breathe and, and there are so many natural supplements out there, I guess you could say that are really, really good for us. They can really help flush a lot of our toxins out. Maybe not all of it, but can flush Mm -hmm. a lot of it out really help us in becoming a little bit more healthy because our foods, of course, our foods are filled with toxins, you know, and I, again, this is just my belief. I believe this is why we're seeing increase in childhood cancer and all kinds of other diseases. Where else is it coming from? It's got to be coming from our foods. Well, our first time together on your show, we did spend a lot of time on, on certain key nutrients and minerals and acknowledge the deficiencies as they relate to addiction. But in a broader sense, even people that don't, uh, you know, aren't, aren't inclined for addiction still have other chronic maladies. It's not identical, but it could be as destructive in some ways. And, you know, food addiction is one of those things that people don't even think they're addicted to, but the cravings that they have, as I talked about, for simple sugars, carbohydrates, or other things, due to mineral imbalances, can in certain body types with emotional states and things, lend themselves toward addictions of any and all kinds, including drugs, alcohol, etc. But even those that are not gravitating towards those overtly destructive substances can abuse food that has been processed to make us addicted. So that's another aspect. So in addition to the toxins that you mentioned, they displace the minerals that are already not there because the food has been so corrupted over the last 100 years. The way we grow food is so different. We poison the soil and then the the life forms in the soil that make available the minerals are no longer there. So these things are unavailable or not bioavailable for the plants that grow there. So if you eat the plants or if you eat the animals that eat the plants, if they're not there, you don't ever get them. And so that's why supplementation has become so necessary and better farming practices or gardening practices to break that cycle and replenish that which we need so we don't reach for things that are destructive but our body might know better but our own intelligence seems to suffer in misinterpreting the signals. And so I know that last time, or the video didn't work, but we have, I think the audio podcast for those oh, yeah, who yeah. hadn't listened to it, I think it was filled with a lot of good information. Yeah. Oh, a ton of great information. I mean, um, and Mel and I, we've actually discussed it quite a few times. Yeah. You know, just definitely. sitting here waiting for guests to show up, you know, mm-hmm. about a lot of the information that you shared. And and uh, I actually went on your site, I think it was the, the following day after you were here the first time and was pulling some of the stuff up and reading on it. And I'm like, my gosh, this is this is really, really good, you know, and and, you know, our situation finances are are pretty tight with a lot of people nowadays with the way the economy is and yeah. however i'm i'm doing my best to level the scales out going okay mm-hmm. does it cost more to go to the doctor yeah 
Yeah. Or does it? It always costs cost more. It costs more, more up to, here. I know, yeah. right? And and I've got a pretty good family physician. He knows how I feel about prescription drugs. And again, I'm not knocking all prescription drugs because there are some that I, again, I just feel that people need. You know, to kind of help balance their chemical balance, and, and maybe not because you know nutrition a heck of a lot better than right. I do. Uh, but he knows how I feel about it, and he knows that I'd rather just do as much as natural as possible. Yeah. Well, we have the you know reality in terms of brain chemistry. That's an interesting discussion and very controversial one. In the field of psychiatry, they have something called the DSM, which is their kind of bible for their medicines and their their uh, diagnoses. But with addiction and or uh, mental aberrations, they might, they might describe it as uh, bipolar or depression, any number of things. There is no blood test, there is no urinalysis, there is no saliva test, hair test. There's no what we call an identifiable, independent of our, uh, let's say, um, interpretation from a questionnaire per se. There is no biochemical analysis or test that definitively says you have this Therefore, here's the drug for it. So it's a grand experiment, like selective serotonin reuptake inhibiting drugs, SSRIs, Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft. That arguably has become one of the most overprescribed drugs based on not, again, in a chemical analysis, a blood test of any kind. So there's no definitive test to say you definitely are needing this. You don't have, any, uh, let's say, a deficiency in that. Now, I will grant you that there are cases where you can point to or a person would claim, hey, I got on that medicine and it helped me. And I'm not disputing those individual cases, but mm-hmm. as a broad-based response to things like depression and addiction, those, to, to my experience, should be a last, 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 last resort when all else has failed. But very often, even in kids with ADHD, when their, ki- their parents say, hey, I tried everything, and now that they're on Ritalin, for instance, and I say, well, did you try this? You know, I'll mention a certain key mineral, like we talked about chromium. Oh, yeah. no, I didn't try that. Uh, did you try this herb? Uh, no, I didn't try that. What about this homeopathic? No, I didn't try that. Well, you told me you tried everything. You tried everything that you knew or that your doctor knew, but you didn't try everything. And this is why, you know, and I acknowledge this in my own life with my own family and my wife and all the things we have challenges with. We get to points that we say we've tried everything, but I haven't tried that or the next thing that I don't know about. And, and so it's not a defeatist statement anymore that I have tried everything, so I'm giving up and I'm going on a toxic poison. It's a recognition that if I'm open to the, the messages from God that I believe they're always being given unto us, if we desire, let's say, to find a more natural route, we have to have that thought for them. Because if we don't, then we're like, we defer to these doctors that might mean well, but they're not trained in anything, what we call holistic, truly supportive of the body's metabolism and it's you know mental health and all of that uh, then we will come to that conclusion that i've tried everything because the doctor says there's nothing else you can do this is yeah. where you are this is the last resort and there's so many things to try before you get to a last resort and i think our culture has abandoned that so part of my job in my show for now 23 almost 24 years is to bring the things up that i knew nothing about because i'm a standard american right growing up in a medical family pharmaceutically to learn what I've learned holistically and homeopathically to recognize that there's a whole world of healing out there, thousands and thousands of years of history that we have abandoned. In fact, we might talk about one ingredient I just encountered very recently. And before I'm even talking about it on my show, I'll talk about it on your show because it may help a lot of people with addictions, including or especially um, cigarette addiction, you know, tobacco addiction. Could this this ingredient also help? We talked about Mm -hmm. sugars being a really big addictive Mm -hmm. substance especially for kids right now my kids in particular Mm -hmm. it's like trying to get them to eat healthy is i might as well be shooting myself in the foot (laughs) it's like when whenever i make vegetables i'm the only one that eats them yeah i do my best to have them have at least a bite but there's almost tears at that right Mm -hmm. it's like could this substance even help my kids in a moment like that. Perhaps, but I think we talked about it last time together. One key mineral that would help them more than anything in terms of craving for sugar is chromium. Chromium and vanadium. These two minerals are, right. have been basically refined out of the food supply. Uh, so much so that uh, the abject deficiency of chromium in particular results in an inability to deliver the energy via sugars that are normally occurring, you know, even in the diet, uh, to the cells. And, and also to have them stored as fat when you have you know excess as opposed to delivering them in a way that would be 
uh, creating hyperactivity. You know, suddenly you've got this frenetic energy and then you crash, the hypoglycemic crash. I remember that in my own upbringing. So for me, that's your number one. And my kids know that. So even if they have an organic treat from time to time, you know, it's the holiday season, we stay organic, you know, like we had organic, uh, uh, let's say we had organic apple pie, you know, or organic blueberry pie. I mean, these were all organic quality ingredients, so no toxic poisons added. But yeah, there are natural sugars in it, a little more concentrated than normal. And I don't even have to tell them. They go, well, let me grab the chromium. Because they understand the relationship between the minerals and the inflow of something that is unusual, right? So it's not that my kids don't have certain junk foods, but they are of organic quality. All the stuff we grew up with in America, you know, yeah. you and I, you're, <clears throat> a little, you're like a little baby here. Right? <laughs> but maybe, but the thing is, I'm joking about that, but, but serious too, because we grew up, I grew up on junk food, mm -hmm. fast food. And now everything that I grew up on, I could find an organic version of. Even though it's considered junk, at least it would be less toxic, even if it's not ideal. So that alone is a big step in the right direction. So for your kids to make sure that if you have or they're going for a treat, that the quality of that treat is better. And then supplement with those minerals and help guide them and teach them about their bodies. Like I gave my kids the opportunity to learn about this, not like I knew growing up, to say, hey, you know, I'm raising you what I call organically. We're only going to eat organic food. And yeah, there are vegetables, but there are meats that are grass-fed, you know, if the kids like meat. So it's not like they're, they're denied and they only have to eat bean sprouts and tofu, which is not something that's been part of our diet growing up. And uh, I gave them the opportunity to learn. So if you go out with your friends and maybe your friends offer something or the friend's parents offer something that you're not sure what it is, you can try it if you want. But I want you to pay attention to how your body reacts and responds. And, you know, of course, my little girl, when she was four, she was already saying, is it organic? When she's, and I'm not with her, and her parents are reporting to me, what have you done to your kid? I tried to give her some food, and she asked, first of all, it's organic, and I told her yes, and she said, let me see the label. <laughs> and, and she knew the word, she knew how to read the word organic before she could read cat, you know, so she recognized the, the letters together. But it was an opportunity for, for not to me to be a food Nazi per se, but to yeah. say, I want you to have the opportunity to understand the relationship with food and how it manifests in symptoms. It's something that most Americans, including myself, never had the opportunity to learn until my adult years at 24 when I made the switch. And then I had to really be sensitive to this food, when I eat it, this is what happens. But for me, at the time of growing up under medicine, it was like, doesn't matter what your symptoms are, take this drug, the symptom will go away. Who cares what caused it? You don't have to eat food that's organic. What is that, right? And all of these things that come up. So for me, it's a learning of, of a language that we were not taught. We were deprived of learning here in the United States because we kind of abandoned the thousands of years of history of connection to food and the earth and the nature and all of that. And we said, oh man, better living through chemistry in the 20th century. And we are just blown away by it and, and, and hypnotized by it. And so if we were to begin to bring to a doctor this information about, well, what about the food? What about the minerals? They'll just go, that's silly, because they didn't learn about it. They were learning that the only thing to do as a doctor is to write a prescription, sorry, for a toxic poison that is approved by the FDA called a drug. Yet there is no deficiency for that drug. It doesn't exist. It's a synthetic man-made chemical yeah, or chemistry. Yeah. It's not of God. It's not of nature. It's of man. Now, to your point, there may be a, a, arguably a place for it where there's an advancement, particularly in emergency trauma interventions to save a life. You know, you've been hit by a bus, shot by a bullet. Amazing things can happen, but we don't have to abandon natural medicine. I mean, even the use of homeopathic Arnica Montana. You guys know about Arnica? No. Right? Uh -uh. This is silly. Even in old John Wayne movie, he talks about Arnica back in the old West. Arnica is really? a plant. It's a it's leopard's bane in America. It's one, Arnica, of, the, huh? one of the most amazing plants, but used homeopathically, it, it works with shock, injury, trauma, bruising. So if you're in an accident, you want Arnica. You, you, if you're sore muscles, you want Arnica. But we don't know anything. We go ibuprofen, aspirin, Tylenol, whatever, to, to reduce the pain. <laughs> yeah, and all of those things suppress normal responses of the body to deal with an injury or trauma or even working out where you're building muscle. And so it creates a sense of, I feel better, but am I better? On uh, the broadcast just the other day, on my show, the Robert Scott Bell Show, if you don't know about it, robertscottbell.com, uh, we talked about osteoarthritis, interestingly enough. We talked about pain. Yeah. People can be led into addiction. that They never had that in their history, but they're in pain all of the time. And the doctor's meaning, well, we'll put them on a steroidal or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, or it, it kind of leads to stronger and stronger, and then they get addicted. 
But in the case, this, this discussion was about a, a study, long-term study about osteoarthritis, and they were using corticosteroids or corticosteroids, injections. These are steroids, right? And they found that uh, over time, it would degenerate the joint. If it was an elbow, a knee, or whatever. And yet, they were reporting, but how great it was that they had no pain along the way to that degeneration. And now we can replace their knee artificially. So we're going to go in surgically, remove your, you know, whatever's left because it, it broke down the integrity of the connective tissue. Uh, so again, this is another point of you put in something that reduces pain, granted, not an argument, but it destroys the integrity of the tissue itself. All the long time you go, well, at least I'm out of pain. In the meantime, now you have to go in and get a knee. Talk about an expense. Oh, yeah. Now, for people that have great medical insurance, and I say that the most dangerous thing you can have in America is really great medical insurance because it guarantees they're going to butcher you or give you all kinds of tests and drugs that are not really good for you. Uh, you end up in a scenario where you're like, well, I didn't pay for it. The insurance did. How much did the insurance cost? Well, for some, it's their own government help and assistance, so they don't feel the real cost. The real costs are outrageous. And yet the real cost of a knee replacement is permanent drugging to deal with all the effects of having an artificial knee or whatever, a hip or whatever. And, uh, you know, on and on the ongoing medical treatments and, and surgeries that will follow because there's always one leads to another and another. So we have a perspective that's a little bit, let's say, I, I, you know, out of balance in the way we look at when we say, hey, can I afford it? I know you guys understand that. We've talked about that. Can you afford it? Can you... Well, I, I say I, organic food, it's a little bit more expensive. It's not as bad as it once was. But if you think it's expensive, have you priced cancer? And what that means to you, even yeah. if you have good insurance. I mean, it's a disaster in terms of if anybody's been through it or I've had a family member been through it uh, and, and not recovered holistically. What a devastating thing. But we, we tend to only look at the short term, the immediate. What did I pull out of my pocket to pay for something like you, you went on my website and, and linked up to the fulvic acid, yeah. fulvic acid formula, which was very reasonable, I think. And it helps to bind the metals and detoxify in a simple way. So even if you do one little thing, it won't break your budget, but you'll find out you'll be stronger. You'll be better able to do other things. You'll think more clearly. And little bit by little bit, the worthiness, if you will, I've talked about that. We often feel in an addictive circumstance, we're not worthy. Right? So that's part of the, the, the process and the emotions we experience. And so changing that uh, viewpoint of, the, of ourselves, of worthiness, is like, do we tell God we're not worthy? God who loves us without end, without judgment, without abandonment? And then I begin to think about, you know, how do I feel about myself, my self-worth? If I'm telling God I'm not worthy, what am I doing? I'm spitting in God's face. God created me. Created you, created you. Yeah. So, you know, the worthiness factor is something I had to overcome initially when I made switches to eat cleaner food that cost more, you know, initially. Although the things that I've saved over many years now, it's it pales in comparison. Oh, but yeah. it's a different kind of math, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't remember what book it was that I read. <clears throat> um, and it was talking about, maybe it was when I was involved with Herbalife. I, I don't mm -hmm. remember. But, you know, I mean... Everything that's been placed on this earth was placed here for our best interest, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like you said, we've we've changed with the way the farming has been because back in the days, farmers, they kind of rotated crops and it, they did that for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, because it helped with for the plums. soil and, and minerals and everything. <clears throat> um, and uh, like you said, we've, we've lost so much of that, but there are so many herbs and plants and different things out there mm -hmm. that was put here for the exact reason what you're talking about. And, I mean, the Native Americans lived off the land and off the plants. And, I mean, how many things did they take that helped them get through all the ailments? I mean, they didn't have a cell phone to pick up and call their they didn't have C any you know, CVS or Walgreens yeah, right. and go, yeah. you know, or call a doctor and, and say, hey, will you call in a prescription for me because my big toe hurts, my horse yeah. stepped on it, you know? Right. So, I mean, everything's here. And like you said, we've gotten away from it. I am starting to see a little bit of a shift of people starting to go, you know what, I'm, t I'm tired of this. And yes, there is there are places for modern medicine. I mean, if I broke an arm, I need a flipping doctor to go to so he can set my arm, get it healed again. <clears throat> but there are so many good things out there. And, and I've even when I was doing like Herbal Life, I was really intrigued with a lot of stuff because... Uh, from what they taught us 
they don't have no middlemen. They grow all their own herbs and everything, and they make sure that the soils are tested to make sure no pesticides are in the soils and different things. So they're, they're doing their best to give you mm -hmm. a really, really good product. And there's other really good products. Like if you guys go on um, Robert's, robertscottbell.com, you'll see a lot of stuff on his website that, I mean, that's where I've got the uh, fulvic minerals, mm -hmm. you know, and I read up on it and I was watching some of the stuff on it and I'm like, gosh, man, this sounds pretty flipping cool. And it is reasonably priced, especially if you sign up for a monthly thing, which I'm like, can I really do this? Like, my gosh, things are really tough. However, mm -hmm. I'm approaching 60 really quick and I want to be around for another 40 years. I, I really do. I want to be around another 40 years. Mm -hmm. And if, if I have to spend another $49 a month to take something that I put in an eight or 10 ounce glass of purified water, there's no taste mm -hmm. really. And it's helping get rid of a lot of the crap yeah. that I'm putting in my body. Man, for me, it's, it's worth it. But sometimes it's a leap, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it, because the economics, we, we were dealing with these realities and that they're harsh and, and difficult at times. And I know when I started to eat cleaner food, I was 24 years of age, not far out of college. I didn't have a lot of money. I wasn't making big bucks or anything, but I, I it was like a come to God moment. You know, we talk about worthiness again. Uh, do you believe you're worthy of the best yeah. for you? And so part of it is a, it's a mental emotional spiritual construct that then leads to a physical shift or change you take a leap you're like all right i'll do one thing and i say try one thing find something you know maybe it's an intuition maybe it's a you know a, a, a dream you wake up and you have this thought this thing get on it that one thing will show you the reality of what we're talking about yeah. that in nature we have all of the options and solutions that can counteract all the things we have thought for decades now only a doctor can help here right because they know. Well, they don't know. They mean well, for the most part, yeah. but um, they end up harming more than they help. And that's that's problematic if you are genuinely feeling there's something else out there, but you're afraid to make that leap because you've you know, kind of bought into a belief system that's hard to break free of. And so if you take that one step like you did and you find out, wow, I'm, I'm actually feeling a little bit different. There's something here that's real. You have some tangible thing that you can go, okay, this is not just maybe it's actually happening and you might take another step another step but the worthiness again comes back into abundance that in god in spirit there is no limit you know our limits are a construct of our belief system that others lay on us to want us in poverty and so i've invested you know in my family's health yeah we do more than just one supplement i've found the ones and i talk about them that i actually use because they're food or they're you know in a, in a form that the body can immediately utilize there's no waste and, and then you put that into play and you find out, my gosh, my kids don't have any of the chronic diseases my wife and I had when we were kids and young adults because we didn't know better. And so you go, how much did we say by never having to go to a doctor oh, for yeah. any of this stuff? And it's an easy decision looking back, but it's hard when you've been stuck in something for so long. And, uh, you know, I would just say, uh, honestly, this is a spiritual journey. Connect and reconnecting with the source of all of life, all of healing. And, and listening to the guidance, this has been a journey for me because when I prayed to God for help to heal me, I didn't get a miracle cure, you know, or a lightning bolt. You know, I've talked about that. It was being grounded in a spiritual relationship that I had to develop and strengthen in my communication with God, with the divine, learning how to stay connected so that I could be guided through the morass of difficulties and, and deceptions and things like that. Now, everybody finds it in a different way, so I'm not here to tell you how to do it, although we talked about some of the techniques yeah. that I like to use. If they help you, great. Uh, but the reality is the journey that we're on, the suffering that we have is not happening to us, but it's happening for us. Even the most harsh times that we're living through are a gift to awaken us. Yeah, Not absolutely. everybody does, but it, yeah. it's, it's for that. I've con I'm convinced in my life, time and time again, I, I can't argue with God on that anymore. Yeah. Well, and again, and, and I've used just our, our audience has heard me say this many, many times. And, and I don't know if you, you met um, Nicholas Smith mm -hmm. when we were there at uh, Anna's birthday party yes. and Ryan was there, you know, yes. and they were guests on the show. And, you know, when he's talking about connecting the dots backwards and yeah. um, I took that to heart when he said that. And I really started looking back and I realized, man, I'm where I'm supposed to be this exact moment. Mm -hmm. Once I started connecting those dots backwards, I had to experience everything I had to experience yeah. to get 
to where I'm at right now. Just like you, I mean, you had health issues at a, at a young age that you shouldn't be going through at such a young age. I mean, even in your teens and your twenties, man, yeah. you know, we're pretty much indestructible. We think that we're Superman, <laughs> you know, bullets bounce off of us. Mm -hmm. And then we wake up one day and realize that's not true. If there's just, yeah, there's just, if you go back and look, your journey was your journey to help put you right where you're at right now, Robert. Mm -hmm. So now you're out there I, doing God's work, helping other people start opening their eyes, hopefully, and going, yeah. hey, maybe it's time for me to make a shift, you know? And it's, uh, I've even shared on the show, and my wife and I have talked about it, who's actually in the studio here with us today. And, you know, um, and she was jokingly saying this one time that she goes, you know, um, your podcast wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for my addiction. Well, she's 100% correct, right. you know? And, and I've put myself in the addiction world. So I had to go through everything that I went through mm -hmm. to put me right where I'm at right now, yeah. where we hope here through Resilience Talk Network and the other side of addiction that now we're also doing God's work where we're trying to get a message out there and, and share with people and say, man, give it a shot. Yeah. You know? Well, what has your suffering brought you and the suffering of your wife? It's brought you to a place of uh, a gift that you're giving back to yeah. life. And, you know, I, I look at this and I say, wow, if, if I wasn't helped or able to help myself, I would be kind of inept in helping other people, even though I wanted to. And I know a lot of people, you want to help people. You want, yeah. I mean, that's, a, I think, a natural human desire. There are people that are not like that, and uh, they're probably in government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and maybe even medicine. Medi but, maybe. <laughs> but the, we got people waving their hands right? in the studio. <laughs> the, 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 the idea of helping others is, you know, I think it comes again from our relationship to the divine because yeah. it's love. It's oriented in love. And yet so much of our suffering kind of limits our ability to help others. Yet at the same time, as an experience, it facilitates maybe an opening of the heart and a willingness to, you know, to do the things that are maybe not initially very comfortable to do. But we want to, you know, get through that place of suffering, not only for ourselves, because for me, it was initially a very selfish reason. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to well, feel yeah. miserable, right? Yeah. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being motivated by your own self-interest. In fact, that's what leads to being selfless, right? That's interesting about selfishness. We we kind of look at it as a negative thing. But initially, I think we must be somewhat selfish or else we could never achieve selflessness, right? right. I mean, we could be selfless in a, in a situation where we are so sick and suffering and we're giving and we're giving. You hear about the, the super moms of the world. They give, 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 and there's nothing left for themselves. And then they end up, you know, any number of, of things that happen, including addiction. And then there's a point where they'll wake up and go, you know what, I, this is not in balance. And then, yet there are people in their own family who love mom, yet are almost addicted to what mom does for oh, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And so when mom decides I'm changing, and then there's a rebellion in the family because it's like, whoa, you're not the same mom. I, you know, and, and you don't understand mom needs... I'm just using this as an example because there are I'm a lot of super it. it's, moms. It's you're uh, explaining my life, <laughs> right? But yet yeah, the other people around will resist. Not only, not necessarily because they don't want the best for you, because it's become comfortable. Just like anything, we get into habits and patterns and such. So, you know, life is a series of it, confronting with things that are easy and habitual, and we even see the economic challenges we're going through or political challenges we're going through. And I think, again, they're also happening for us because we've gotten so lazy. Life had gotten so easy that we, you yeah. know, abandon what's really important. And even the young people that have grown up wanting for nothing, how long can they sustain life itself when they're all worried about, you know, social media, you know, and who's on TikTok with me? And these are things not very necessary for survival in any way, shape or form. Without them, life will continue. But without yeah. some of these other things we're talking about, now you're devastated. So there's a lot of things that I think are happening for the purpose of re a reawakening, I not as so a punishment, because we can always look at these. Now, I'm being punished, and it's like I don't think that is really helpful. Ultimately, <clears throat> that's how my kids would see it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's sure. like a good yeah. buddy of mine, um, Axel Soto. You know, um, when I called and told him, I think God's mad at me, and he goes, "Our God doesn't punish you, and our God doesn't get mad at you." You know, so really we shouldn't look at it that way mm -hmm. you know I, I i really think the punishment we're we're putting our own punishment on ourselves mm -hmm. 
you know, and even like you, you were saying that you've got to have that self love and care about you. Our, our guest on our live show yesterday, we had uh, Candace Platter on yesterday and that was one of the things she's, she mentioned many, many times throughout the show. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that self love. Yeah. And again, it's not selfish. Yeah. It really isn't, you know, and I mean, we use this analogy quite a bit and I don't know, maybe you have on your show, but you know, when, when you are getting on an airplane and they're going through the safety procedures, mm -hmm. you know, and they say, Hey, in case of uh, loss of pressure in the cabin mask, come down, put that on yourself Your before yeah. it's like me. I couldn't even help my wife through her addiction because I wasn't even helping myself. Right. Yeah. Once I started realizing that, which took me what, seven years to finally mm -hmm. wake up. Then a shift finally started happening for yeah. her. So. I've heard it said that God loves us more than we love our own defilements, right? All the things yeah. that we're addicted to. It's like we will judge ourselves more than God would do that. And we get trapped and then we never break free of it because that, that love we're not allowing in. Which, of course, even addiction, we'd argue, I'd argue to some degree is a, is a longing for that love that we're replacing with something less than that. And again, coming back to the human physiology having a lack of minerals, for instance, can be misinterpreted in symptoms as a lack of sugar or a lack of some substance that gives us a dopamine hit, yeah. whether it be cigarettes or whatever. So we look in nature and find that there are substances that can facilitate those things that can help reduce the reliance and the addiction to then be able to now work to that next level. Because sometimes that physical craving is so overwhelmingly powerful that if we can't break that, we can't hit that next level, even though we feel like we're almost there emotionally or even mentally. Um, there is that physical body we're still trapped in that is stuck in deficiency and the cravings. So breaking cycles like that are so very important. Uh, and that's why I talk about the minerals and things that we've talked about or other substances that can help us through addiction. Yeah. And what, what I'd like to do, I'd like to take this time and we'll stop for a quick commercial break and then come back. And I would like to talk a little bit about the Kratom and then you mentioned just probably about five or ten minutes when we started the show about this new thing that you have found that you are going to talk about on your show. Yeah. I, I'm really interested in learning a little bit more mm -hmm. about that because just what little you shared with us, that stuff. I yeah. mean, you've got me curious, really, really curious. What about you, Mel? Yeah, I definitely am yeah. waiting to make my notes on it. Stick and, around. Yes. And, and we We're sit here good. and we hide our notes because I know I didn't spell... Uh, Arnica, right? So, but I might have got it. I spelled it exactly how I do it have sounds. it. Really? Yeah, well, so did I. Yeah. So anyway, hey, guys, stay with us. We'll be right back. Have you ever been in a car accident? Do you know what to do after being in a car accident? Are the insurance companies going to take care of you? Hi, I'm attorney Rick Heaton with the law office of Bobby Udall. I will help you through the process and answer all of these questions. I give every single client my cell phone so they can talk to me whenever they need. Let me deal with the insurance company so you can focus on getting better from your injuries. Call me at 385-330-0226. Again, my cell phone number, 385-330-0226. Don't call the insurance company first. Call attorney Rick Heaton at 385-330-0226. Hello, my friends. This is Brad Newfeld, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Resilience Talk Network. You can listen to my show, Resilience, every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. On my show, we will be discussing what it takes for you to overcome the day-to-day -day challenges that all of us face in life, as well as some of the devastating ones that may lead us to feelings of hopelessness and despair. It's my goal to provide you with the tools and skills that you need to overcome anything that is thrown your way. To find out more about my show, visit our website at www.resiliencetalk.com. That's www.resiliencetalk.com. And as always, until we meet again, go for everything that you want in life and make it happen. This is Leticia with Computer Hospital. We are your computer repair experts for both PC and Mac. 
We are your community resource for all of your computer repair needs. What makes us different is that we want to fix your computer. We also do free diagnostics. We charge a flat rate labor, which means that you won't pay by the hour. All of our computer repair is done in-house with a fast turnaround time and same day service is also available. Feel free to stop by anytime without an appointment. We're located in Sandy at 8721 South State Street. Again, that's 8721 South State Street or call us at 801-987-3993. Again, that's 801-987-3993. This is Leticia with Computer Hospital, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Hello there, this is Brad Newfeld with the Resilience Talk Network, and I would like to introduce to you Taffy Town, one of our newest sponsors. Let me introduce you to Derek. Hi, I'm Derek from Taffy Town. We're proud sponsors of the Other Side of Addiction podcast. Taffy Town is a family owned and operated business, still operating in the Salt Lake City area for over 100 years. We manufacture some of America's best saltwater taffy. What makes Taffy Town stand out from all of the others? We have a unique recipe, a whip style recipe that incorporates egg whites, evaporated milk, real sea salt. It's a unique product that is flavorful, melts in your mouth. And the best part is we probably have a flavor for anyone's um, liking, a flavor for any reason, for any season. Uh, we have unique flavors like chicken and waffles, maple bacon, frosted cupcake, uh, new this year was a pineapple ghost pepper flavor. That's awesome. Where can people find out more about Taffy Town and all of its products? You can check all of this stuff out. All of our products are available uh, for sale on taffytown.com. We ship for free from our website, so all of our pricing on there is, is shipping included. Uh, oftentimes we uh, offer special promotions and discounts to our loyal customers, so do be sure to sign up for an account and we look forward to seeing what we can do to make you smile with our taffy. Where are you located? We are currently located at 9813 South Prosperity Road in West Jordan, Utah, just at the foothills of the Copper Canyon Mine. Derek, taffy has always been a great gift to give. What are some of the creative ways Taffy Town can help say thank you to others? Yeah, if, if you're looking for gift ideas, whether to say thank you to friends or family, or maybe to your clients after such a difficult or successful year that you've had, you could look no further than to get a gift idea from taffytown.com. We offer prepackaged gift boxes that say that it's saltwater taffy from the city of the Great Salt Lake, and it tells a little bit about the history of our community and making candy for so long. You can also do customized gifts to pick out just the right flavors or colors of candy for that special someone and deliver even a personalized message in that box to them. So please feel free to check out taffytown.com for any gift ideas this season. Thank you so much, Derek. Please visit taffytown.com, that's taffytown.com, to find out more about the products and services that Taffytown offers. You won't be disappointed. Do you know someone who's gambling with death due to an addiction? Do you know someone whose life is being turned upside down due to a loved one that's battling with addiction? Hi, I'm Al Richards. I am the host of the Other Side of Addiction podcast. I started the podcast due to my wife's battle with alcohol. Let's just say I became addicted to her addiction. Our podcast is helping people understand a little more about those who have battled addiction and those who are hurting from their addiction. Through raw vulnerability, we share stories that help uncover the root causes of addiction. Shame felt on both sides, a matter of the conscious and subconscious mind. Continued beliefs and often confusing paths of recovery. We collaborate with real people and their stories as well as licensed professionals to help our audience gain a better understanding of addiction. You can find us on Resilience Talk Network. You can also find us on Facebook at 
Mr. Al Richards. That's Facebook at Mr. Al Richards. You can also find us on YouTube. Just look up the Other Side of Addiction podcast. Welcome back to the Other Side of Addiction podcast. Again, I'm your host, Al Richards, and we are here with our guest today, Robert Bell Scott. So, or Robert Scott Bell. I I always want to put the bell in the middle for some reason. You you confuse me. I guess it's like uh, my name, Alan Ray Richards, instead of going Alan Richards Ray, I guess. (laughs) And we have the lovely Mel with us today. So, Mel, again, thank you for being here. Thanks. So, right before we went on break, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Kratom. Now, the last time you were on the show, Robert, you mentioned it. You struck my curiosity. Uh, I think it was a couple of days after the show. I finally had a chance. Um, matter of fact, I think it was a early Sunday morning. I jumped on and, and I started doing some research on it. And it's it's crazy, all the stuff that I was reading on it. Mm-hmm. So you're reading about all the good things that Kratom does. And then you'd start going down and you'd see something that says, do you want to know the real truth about Kratom? And you'd click on it. And for me, and again, this is just how I'm seeing it. Not saying that you guys are going to do the same thing, but I'm reading it and I'm going, somebody out there is not wanting you to know about this. All the wording that they used in there, the way that they made it sound is like you need to be scared of this stuff it's poison you do not want anything to do with it and then i'd go in and i'd read a diff- another article and click on it and it starts talking about all the benefits that it has and i'm going okay now if i'm not mistaken i think i wrote down a note um, it comes from a tropical tree in the coffee family mm-hmm. right and it's uh, native to the southeast asia and it's been used for centuries you talked about it earlier in the show how all over the world, every freaking country, place out there, the Chinese, I mean, Europeans, early Americans, Native Americans, they all lived off of the plants mm-hmm. and the roots and uh, of everything that God has put on this earth. And we've gotten away from that. So if I'm reading all this stuff and I'm going, it's come it comes from, and it's come from from a coffee family, which yeah. I guess coffee's okay because I drink my one cup a day. You yeah. Know, sometimes two. There, there I'll, are, I'll spoil myself. But, there are yeah. nutrient and, and physiochemical benefits uh, if you're not going overboard, but that's true on anything. Yeah. And uh, in this particular family of plants, the kratom plant, it's fascinating because I didn't grow up knowing about it. In fact, much of my homeopathic career, I'd never heard of it until, uh, I don't know, it was about eight, ten years ago. You know, after my wife got injured from uh, dental extractions that created the trigeminal neuralgic pain that she suffers from, which is brutal, having mm-hmm. gone through even, you know, modern medicine and their even opioid drugs, and nothing touched her pain. And she felt like when she tried the opioids, like, I understand why people get addicted to this. But we were like, we can't go down that road. That's death. And then we, were, we encountered the Kratom plant. And there were people that I had met that had experienced severe addictions to heroin as well as opioids and they were uh, utilizing this plant in a powdered form typically and put it in like a tea and they drink it and they'd come off of this I mean heroin addiction vets military vets much less opioids I'm witnessing this I'm like all right this is something that's so astonishing you know I'm meeting with these people one-on-one like we're talking together not hearing or reading about it I'm like talking about their experience and you know, homeless vets that found Kratom and they got off all of this stuff. I'm like, what the heck is this plant? And why didn't I know about it? At the same time, as you point out, there's a lot of controversy online when you look at the Kratom plant. Everybody's saying, oh, it's dangerous, it's this. And you find out who's writing it, it's dangerous, or, you know, the drug companies that don't want competition, the addiction centers that don't want competition. And we tried these, you know, the concern I have, of course, is can you find an organic quality that's not contaminated? So that's always my concern. Finding sources for it, which I did, and then began to implement them for my wife in particular, who's the unfortunate guinea pig because she lives in pain. (laughs) 
And she, you know, she described like feeling being enveloped in a warm blanket by utilizing this. Now there are various veins and colors of veins that describe, you know, certain, you know, it's not a one size fits all of kratom you can right. find and try. And so my good friend, John Bush, who has uh, my brave botanicals, we have a, a banner at robertscottbell.com. You say get, you can get a free ounce of kratom just to try it or get them, you know, multi-pack it like 50% off to try it to find out what works. And the reason that they say it's dangerous is they exaggerate the imp impact on the opiate receptors in the body. Because if you do, uh, you know, a high level opioid type drug and you do too much, you can shut down breathing, right? You just shut off breathing. You don't feel anything and you're done. And interesting in interacting with those same receptors, Kratom does not have that same interaction. You will not shut down breathing. You will not, you know, basically stop function with this. It's a different interaction. Yet people often stop at, oh, it, it impacts the same receptors? Oh, then it's the same thing. It's not. But it facilitates a satiation so that you no longer have that craving for the things that were, you know, just drawing you in. Oh, I got to get that hit, got to get that hit. So Kratom has played a, a beautiful role in helping people get off of severe, mild to severe, but the most severest of addictions. Now, again, work, if you're working with your doctor, work with your doctor, but most of them are not open unless they're more holistic or integrative. Uh, but you can try this. This is not a dangerous substance. And uh, I would recommend, again, my buddy John Bush. He's a, a really fine, fine man. He's just a man of integrity. And uh, the link at robertscottbell.com, you'll see banners. One of yeah. them is that. Click yeah. on it, and then you can try it, right? And uh, if it helps you, great. If it, if it doesn't, it's not going to hurt you. That's the beauty here in that regard. So, And that leads me to another thing, unless you have more uh, no, creative no, questions. No, no, no. As we look at issues of addiction, and, you know, my experience personally, as I've talked about this, I didn't have the addictive personality they described. My father had it. He was, you know, an alcoholic from time to time. And some people say you're always, but it would really take over at some time. So I know that there are people that have, a, you know, some kind of weakness, and I'm not judging it that way, just like a physiological uh, gravity towards it. And um, so I'm looking at how many ways we can break the cycle as we talk about from a nutrient perspective. And then yet there are other botanicals. Going back thousands of years, if you're familiar with Ayurvedic medicine, primarily out of India, uh, part of Asia, uh, they have uh, an ancient tradition that's fascinating. Some of the remedies that they use in Ayurveda, we use in homeopathy. Some of them will be used in traditional uh, Western herbalism as well, but then there are others we'll never have heard of until we go looking or somebody finds it and goes, hey, this is really interesting. I got to check this out. So we're just about to talk about this on my show. We're revealing it first here. This thing is called Mucuna purians. It's like a velvet bean coming out of Asia. And mm. it has within it a naturally occurring thing called L-dopa. You all have heard of dopamine. Yeah, yeah. And the need for dopamine hits. Like people that, you know, crave nicotine and cigarettes, they, they suck it in or they're vaping it in. It's like they get that dopamine hit. And it's like, ah. And it's like that's part of the addiction. So this particular bean, it's not something you take caution you know you don't just grab it and eat it i mean that's there are ways to utilize it uh is now being in well not only investigated in the west here but used successfully and safely for addiction particularly uh smoking uh and, and now even vaping uh and so there's a, a a formula that's organic and clean i've looked at it you know before i bring it to my t to, to my audience attention it's like yeah. i gotta see what is in this what are you added into it it's all organic and clean uh it's called crave kicker I think with a K, K-R-A-V, Crave Kicker. And so it, this is a safe substance that you could take one, two, or three times a day. And you know, sometimes within three days, people report that addiction, that craving for the nicotine or the, you know, the smoking is over. Now it becomes a habit issue that you got to break a habit as opposed to having a physiological, right, got to have it. So this Crave Kicker is fascinating because it works with that particular ingredient, Mucuna purians. And uh, I'm very excited about that. I, I don't think of it, my, my producer does, Super Don, because he has smoked his whole life. He's quit a few times. He's been off of it for a while. He was vaping for a while and then even stopped vaping, but his wife is still vaping. So we're very excited to begin to integrate that for her and others that are out there in the audience, even those that are naturally and more holistically oriented that switch from you know, cigarettes that maybe they've gone to American Spirits or Organic Tobacco, which is already way better, but they're wanting to cut down on that or even the vaping. Uh, so this is a way that we can introduce another layer level because you know when people are at AA meetings, there's their coffee and cigarettes, coffee, coffee and cigarettes. And cigarettes. Yeah, so yeah. they're still addicted, even though it may be arguably less harmful, but in some cases not. 
Uh, so another aspect to get to the physiological depth of the cravings is this ingredient. So again, I'm very excited. It's just preliminary, it's early, but the, the, the results are very promising. And again, the safety is there using it properly. So I thought this would be a good audience to uh, bring that out. And we'll have, if it's not already there, a banner for this Crave Kicker uh, to try. Uh, very reasonable. And then I'd love to hear reports back as well, because when we learn of new things, I always am waiting to hear back. What's the feedback? But all of it coming in so far has been great. You know, Robert, and that's that's one of the things I really like about your shows and what you do. You're not one of these guys that's just doing a show and find a new product and you're throwing it out there. You really dig hard and you do your research to make sure that, I mean, again, because you have a lot of people that follow you and respect you and believe in your word, right? You have that integrity there. <clears throat> and I know the last thing you want to do is is damage that integrity. And so I, I really do appreciate you digging in deep yeah. and, and looking for this type of stuff that, again, it can help thousands and thousands of people. So thank you. Yeah, well, yeah it yeah. takes a lot for me to bring on a new product to talk about. You know, you're right, because there are a lot of things. Look, we, do, we economically, I was like, hey, how do we get ahead? I'll just hawk this product. I'll hawk this product. I'm like, I can never do that because, you know, I've been doing this now almost my 24th year, 23 years in to broadcasting more as a homeopath. And you're right. The only thing you have at the end of the day to some degree is your reputation, right? Hey, yeah. is that guy, he, he keeps changing over and you know, the message is consistent. And I, I've got another thing I'm about to launch too with a, a, a man from uh, originally from Georgia, not the Georgia I grew up in, but like former Soviet Union, Georgia. Oh, wow. area. Brilliant, man. And he, he's developed a Chernobyl level antioxidant binding to radiation, you know, kind of elements as well as other heavy metals. And a couple of years we've been going back and forth. I've been reviewing the science. And it's a couple of years. It's like he has immense patience. I have to give him credit because <laughs> he's not let up on me. And it's similar to like the Cardio Miracle uh, product I've maybe we've talked about for the vascular issues and so many of the things we've we've experienced in COVID has been damaged to the vascular system. Yeah. <clears throat> a couple of years there of intense scrutiny and and you know you're still pursuing me and and you know if you're if you're legit, you will have the tenacity to stick with what you believe. Oh, in, absolutely, right? yeah. So it's it, like there are others that just come and go. I'm like I'm not even going to bother at that point. But there are those that have a, a commitment that I'll recognize. But still, it's going to take me time. And just like anything, as we get older. You're still very young. As we get older, and that's not a slight, that's a wonderful thing because you've got <laughs> wisdom too. Uh, you realize that patience is something that, you know, our elders always told us, be patient, be patient. Oh, I want it now. I'm young. I'm ready. Yeah. And yeah. yet I look back at all the years of development to get to the point where I'm patient, even though there are times where I want something to move fast, but I'm recognizing there's a process to life and to really digest appropriately, just like anything, digestion itself. You know, if you engulf and devour without chewing and mixing with saliva, you end up with indigestion. You know, even though you want it, it's good, I love it. Uh, you haven't honored a process that allows for assimilation appropriately. And so in, in life, too, as I study these things, and it took me a while, you know, how many years of uh, toiling in obscurity become an overnight sensation? Or what, you know, that's the thing. They never see the, all the years you oh, worked yeah, hard or absolutely. what you've been through or suffered through to get where you are. And so when you're young, you like... I see it and I want it now and I'm not patient enough because I don't have the wisdom of experience on the planet in this lifetime, in this body. And uh, so I look at these things and I can be frustrated or others could be frustrated about it. Why isn't it faster? But in its own time, uh, and, and it doesn't mean we can't dedicate even more time to accelerate something. There are times we can, uh, but there's a process in life, you know? Oh, Yeah you'll get there and yet we always have a sense of urgency but urgency leads to emergency emergency leads to a lack of critical thinking and then we do things in haste that may not be in our best interest even if we have the right motivation and reasons for doing so so um like approaching uh someone who's drowning if you had lifeguard training i was a lifeguard as well for a while back in back in the day uh they teach you to you know obviously go fast to get them because you're going to save their life but at the same time as soon as you approach them and they're within arm's reach With you caution. do a quick reverse to assess the situation what is the safe way to get in there so even though you know the intent you know the goal i want to save a drowning victim if you go in too fast you risk losing your own life and drowning as well 
So part of the process is, of course, I feel like, yeah, I got to dive in. And then you go, wait, 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 hold on. Let's look around. Let's assess it all the way around. And there's something that's right about that outside of a, you know, a, a building is on fire and you got to get out, which is a genuine emergency. But if we live that way all of the time, we can be easily swayed and given information that seems right. It's a little bit off, but you'll miss it because you don't take the time to really think critically or even pray the moments yeah. to pray on it, to get guidance that's beyond even your mental construct. And I love that you brought that up, Robert, because uh, that's one thing I have really, <clears throat> really learned probably here in the last two, three years and have really pushed in my life at least the last year and a half. And that's just throwing my hands up and just going, you know what? Every time I try to control my life and I try to push things, mm -hmm. everything goes to shit. Mm -hmm. To put it bluntly, everything just goes to shit. But if I say, all right. You know, my higher power is God. And it's like, take over. You lead me, I'll follow. Mm -hmm. I'll listen. Yeah. You know, and it's amazing where things go. And uh, even my wife, she mentioned to me probably a, a couple months ago, she goes, you are so in touch with your spiritual side. And mm -hmm. when yeah. we were in St. George's past August for our Healing Utah Success Summit, Laban and I was, was at a restaurant because his wife, Anna, was interviewing my wife on her podcast and this waitress that we got she was telling us that she can read auras and so of course laban's like read mine <laughs> you yeah. know and she's sitting there reading it and she was having a hard time and um, he goes okay we'll read his and he points at me and anyway by the time she was done she says mine was very white mm -hmm. I had a really bright white aura around me and so on the way home my wife looked it up and it basically states that i'm very in touch with my spiritual side Mm -hmm. And there are things that before in my life that I would jump right into, like you said, what we do when we're younger, mm -hmm. we all go through it. So now, instead of making a decision so quick, I'll stop and I'll wait and I'll listen. Mm -hmm. And Beautiful. it's so cool because sometimes I'll hear it and I'll ignore it and I'll hear it again and I ignore it. It's almost like you get that finger tapping on your head going, are you listening? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then I'll move forward. And it, I would say the majority of the time it turns out to be the right decision. Mm -hmm. And it's because I'm not forcing and I'm allowing, I'm allowing life to take its course. Where I, we, we get so caught up in the 3D world out here that we're not paying attention. And a lot of times when I've heard the voice and I've not said anything, or not paid attention to it. A couple hours down the road, I'm going. Mm. Something told me not to do this, and I I didn't, mm -hmm. and I should have. Mm -hmm. You know. So, um, and and I do believe it's even like with this health stuff, and and having you on the show, it's all happening. At least for me in my life, it's happening for the right reason. And I think it's the same thing going on with Mel because we're both kind of shifting, you Definitely. know, more into mm -hmm. the into the health stuff and and i'm excited to hear more about this i mean you said it so f so fast i can't even remember the name already and i probably wouldn't Me, be able to yeah. pronounce it anyway it, so. well it's latin mucuna mucuna m-u-c-u-n-a purians okay. which is harder to p-r-u-r-i-e-n-s but we'll be talking about it on my show a lot okay. more, investigating it deeper and, and, again, making it available for those that want to try it because there's now a safe, organic, clean form. And that's like with the Kratom. Until I had access to that, I would, I would mention it, but I was like, I don't know how to get it, where to get right. it. Right now, I do, and I've been getting it, and it's fine. So I'm happy to go out into the world. And as you mentioned, you know, kind of that, that practice of the listening. You know, we talked about in our first uh, episode together here mm -hmm. uh, what helped me so much in breaking through the mental noise or the habits and even the emotions uh, was uh, the hue. We talked to remember we talked about the hue. Yes, H -U, I do remember that. An yeah. ancient and sacred name for God, H U, hue, like human. Hue and singing that, chanting that, however you do it. For me, that was a, a very powerful addition to my prayers, if you will, a prayer song to open me up to the voice, to the communication, to break through all of the things that were obstacles, the noise, so to speak, because our minds get in the way, our emotions get in the way. And so for me, uh, it was a very practical tool. And I, I bring it up again, just for people, if you feel like you need something that will help you get past some of this stuff, the sounds of God, you know, this is a sound of spirit uh, that can facilitate an opening of the heart of the consciousness to receive that guidance. And I practice yeah. it. 
you know, all of the time, every day. If it's in the car, I can sing it, I can listen to it, or, you know, if I can sit down quietly in a contemplative, prayerful moment to do that, that discipline is like spiritually exercising. Like I go to the gym and I physically exercise. Well, mm -hmm. what do we do to exercise our spiritual sides, to practice like you described? So you're good at it. You didn't get there that first time you tried oh, yeah. it. Uh, and, and that's part of the process of healing on all levels. Even though sometimes it's just a matter of, I can change one thing physically because I can handle that versus the emotional stuff. It's too hard, too, tra you know, it's too traumatic, but do one thing. And maybe it's the hue for somebody to enter yeah. that into their prayerful daily routine. Uh, and that's why I bring that up again as well, because it's helped me so much. You know, and all it does is it really, it is, it's just taking that one little step, you know, um, we don't get to where we're at in our life just overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, even even a lot of the amazing guests that we've had, even my wife, she didn't become an addict overnight. You know, she didn't wake up one day right. and say, I'm going to be an addict and off you go. You know, this is going to be my career now. It, it takes that time. Mm -hmm. And it takes time for us to make a change, you know, because we have been programmed. I mean, there was a lot of things I did that, I go back and I look at now and it's like, I know where I got it. I got it from my parents because I watched them do it day in and day out. Mm -hmm. No wonder I was doing the same type of thing. Right. I, I, they were programming me, not realizing they were programming me. They were exactly. doing the best that they yeah. had with, you know, had. And I'm getting programmed and it takes time. It takes time. I mean, I've been started back in 2009 is when I started really working on myself. So I started going, who the heck do I want to be? Am I the person that I mm -hmm. think I am? No, I'm not even close. Yeah. And it's taken all this time. Here it is, 2022, almost 2023, and I'm still flipping working on it. And um, yeah, so so people just even in even in the recovery, you've heard a lot of our guests talk about all they did was take that baby step, and then that baby step just kept getting a little further and a little further. Because it took you a while to become an addict. It's going to take you a while to get yourself out. Yeah. Don't rush it. Be patient with yourself. And I'm glad that you were talking about the hue because we have some guests that are coming on this month. Might even be next week. Yeah. I'd have to look at our at our chart. But uh, they deal with music yeah. and certain tones. And I've listened to brainwave entrainment music. I started doing that years ago and thought, man, this is pretty cool. And there are certain tones that bring you closer to God and closer to your spirits. And there's so much to learn out there. And I mean, I used that brainwave entrainment music when I first started meditating. I had this 10 minute clip and I'm like, okay, 10 minutes is perfect for me while I'm working on yeah. getting better at this. And I put my headphones on, lay down on the couch and listen to the tones and there were a few times man I, by the time i got done i had tears rolling down my cheek and didn't even know why because something was happening with me or to me i guess yeah. i should say but yeah well for you for and, me and, yeah you know yeah. we talk about the light of god and i see the light you know but how often do we forget the sound which is the twin you know the twin aspects of the holy spirit divine spirit light and sound and so through music through chanting through you know sound we can reprogram we can much like we talk about detoxification you know the clutter mm -hmm. the patterns the energetic patterns we can bathe in certain sounds and help to heal from that much like we you know might take fulvic humic acid like you're doing to detoxify heavy metals the sound can also purify us as as we know the light does but we often forget the sound so I'm glad you're going to do that. Uh, that's going to be, those will be great episodes when you have that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I met the gal at First Fridays that the West Jordan Chamber and South Jordan Chamber put mm -hmm. on. And she came to my table and <clears throat> she was talking about it. And I'm like, after after the event, you and I need to sit down and talk. And, and we did. And yeah, I'm like, would you like to come on the show? Because I think what you're doing is, I think it would be great. A great show and stuff for people to to know about. And, and you're starting to hear a little bit more about it. You know, there are people out there now that that's all they do. They go in a studio and they record, they record. I mean, there was a, I don't remember which one it is. Um, there's an Ozzy Osbourne song that starts out and it's supposed to be, which this is the dark side. It, the, the notes of it are like the notes of the devil. Mm. I had no idea until I was watching this documentary on Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath back when he was with Black Sabbath. And I was yeah. like, 
oh my gosh, well, that makes a lot of freaking sense, you know, because of the brainwave mm -hmm. entrainment music, which I'd never, yeah. ever heard of. And yeah, how much yeah. it helps. My friend, Michael Tyrell, who just p passed away recently, but a brilliant, gifted musician, talked he had whole tones, if you ever heard of whole tones. He altered the uh, I, the frequency, the hertz or whatever, to 444. I don't remember all the details of it, but recorded some of the most beautiful music, but in a different tone that changed it completely from how they tuned to a certain frequency versus what, what used to be done. And holy tamole, there even has a, like a Christmas thing. There's a little thing you just plug in and you can play it for whole tones for sleep. So these sounds as a healing tool are quite profound and there are brilliant mus musicians understand that even tuning at certain frequencies will change the way we interact with the same song at one yeah. frequency versus another. Uh, so whole tones is really cool if you guys, that's another thing. I think we probably do have a banner for that on the site because people have been helped so much. Uh, by taking that sound, the sounds in the right tone, right? In the right, you know, tuning into a different way. So again, I'm excited that you're going to be exploring that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for that show. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be really cool, cool stuff. Well, we know you've got a podcast to get to your, your live show. Mel, is there, I know you've probably got a lot of things going on. I mean, is there something you'd like to ask Robert here before we, we sign off? No, I'm just gonna have to keep doing my research for sure. Okay, Mel, you've been super quiet today. I have. I know, right? Last time she was my like, ears really... are, "My ears are on." <laughs> okay, I'm right? taking it in. Well, they say two ears, one mouth, right? Yeah. Listen when you talk. I'm not listening very well. I'm sorry, but you know, it's interesting being on a show where I'm interviewed. You know, versus me having the show, and I certainly have to talk on my show. But I love to interview folks because I love to hear the stories and the various experiences we have on this planet this time. And for me, it's uplifting to, to hear these journeys and how, you know, something will, will resonate for someone and, uh, and it won't for another and vice versa. I mean, there are certain times we had a funny uh, uh, listener, a very dedicated, loyal listener right into the show after we did a, a topic that she would, oh, she did not like that topic. She's like, oh, now I'm afraid to recommend the show. What if they hear that topic as if everybody's going to react the same right. way? And I, you know, I find it uh, humorous. We had fun with it, but respectfully, because I, you know, I understand that they're, certain things you don't want to do like my my producer you know i talk about coffee enemas i'm like this is good medicine you want to detox the liver fast good lord that's important he's like oh no that's never gonna happen right? <laughs> i'll only drink the coffee but you know and we make light of it of course and there are other subjects that you know just remember that you know things we talk about here things you guys cover here you may not always resonate with 100 percent of the stuff right. we're covering but yeah. the fact is there are people that will when you don't and i'm grateful that we can do this and that uh, maybe, you know, one of the things that we're overcoming right now is the descent into what's called cancel culture, right? If you are disagree, we disagree with you, so you must be canceled. You must be censored. Right. And it's like, what a horrible thing. God doesn't, you know, uh, censor us because we're different from each other. In fact, we are created that way. And so those, in those differences, there can be beauty and healing and extraordinary things that occur. And I'd love to be able to get to, back to the point where we can have, like we are doing here, discussions about things that... You know, there might be something said, like, ooh, I don't know if I resonate with that, but that's okay. You know, and you can be honest about how you feel about it and still interact and be, be pals, be friends, be lovers, whatever you are to each other. Um, but there's a beauty in our distinct differences and uniqueness that can uplift us, doesn't degrade Absolutely. us. And unfortunately, we've fell on, fallen into a pattern that if somebody's different than us, we, we must uh, avoid them at all costs. Now, I will acknowledge there are people that are negative in terms of drawing energy from you. I'm not arguing that you want to hang out with people that you are in the space and then you're like, oh, I'm exhausted. You know, th these people are in a destructive pattern. But that's where you also have to be so strong, like we talk about. Strengthening ourselves so that we have the ability to withstand and be able to help them when they're ready. Yeah. And not become victimized by their state of consciousness, but be the one that is the uplifting impact as opposed to one that degrades or is in, is in fact degraded by the presence of those that are inadvertently, unknowingly, in a state of such desperation that they're just trying to draw energy from anywhere they can. Um, there's a lot of that, that, you know, just like the drowning victim. You don't want to be drowned by them. You have to be smart about it. And that there's nothing wrong with using what we call rightful discrimination in those situations. It's not harmful. It's not bad. It's not, not nothing to look bad on yourself if you're unable to help someone at a certain time. But this is what we're, I think, doing here is strengthening our resolve and our ability to be strong enough to help those in need because there are plenty. And we've got to be strong enough to help them when they're ready. Yeah. And I appreciate so much what you guys are doing here because it's helping people to get that strong to be able to do that which they desire. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, 
I know we definitely enjoy being here. That's for sure. And and again, I, I'm very blessed and, and grateful that Laban introduced us. Um, it's hard to watch all your shows, but I do get on and watch some of the shows. And, and I've always found every show that I've watched to be awesome. It doesn't seem to matter what guests you bring on. I really like everyone's input. And again, there may be things that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. However, I still appreciate their information yeah. that they're sharing because it could still be helping someone. Absolutely. You know, and, and we say this even on the show. Sometimes, that's why I say a lot of times, this is just my belief. You know, I'm not here to tell you to believe something right. different. You believe what you want to believe, what works for you. Yeah. However, this is how I'm seeing it, you know, and mm -hmm. you may run into somebody that sees things the way that I do. And I'm hoping that the information that all of us here share. What a great gift, someone, though, you know, to acknowledge someone who believes differently and you acknowledge mm -hmm. that it's working for them. And then I say, yeah. if at any point it stops working for you, at that point, you've been exposed to information that might be helpful to you at a different time. Maybe not right oh, yeah. now. And so you never know that seed is being planted. The things I encountered years ago that somehow now come back. Go, oh, wow. I couldn't have used it then. I can use it now. So that's part of the process here. And what you all are doing is is a great gift, not only for yourself, but for all that uh, plug in and watch. So I'm grateful that we can hang out together whenever whenever we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'd love to have you back again, Robert. You know, I think it would be great to have you back, hopefully maybe in um, February or something like that on one of our live shows. Um, I believe you're open like around 530 in the evening time because that's sure. usually when we do our, our live shows. Love yeah. to... We'll pick a topic and just come in and talk for about 45 minutes on something, you know. Uh, hopefully during this time, I'll have a chance to try some of these things, Yeah. you know, that, that we spoke about today. And I could even put my little input on it and mm -hmm. say, hey, this is what it's done for me or, you know, yeah. my wife or whatever. So Well, and last thing, just as a gift for you, you guys, um, the use of antibiotics, the overuse and abuse of antibiotics is destroying our immune system, affecting our emotions, our mind, all of that. So this is a little sinus spray, silver, sovereign silver. And, you know, for those of you who have the sniffles through the winter months, rather than resorting to, oh, my, I need an antibiotic for an infection. Good Lord, we've had so many things. Silver is one of the most brilliant things. And, uh, you know, I've utilized that for years for my kids. My kids have never had antibiotics. So... I just wanted to acknowledge that's another aspect of our physical health impacting our emotional, mental, and other aspects of our health. I love it. And thank yeah. you so yeah, much. So you. we'll we'll be sure to get you a t shirt too before we go. That's all we have to offer. Oh it's, man, you guys yeah, are it's not a mineral or anything. <laughs> no. I love t shirts. It too. is something you can wear. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Hey guys, thank you for everything. We we just want to say thank you to all our, our many sponsors, all our listeners. Um, Resilience Talk Network, Brad and, and Mason, thank you for everything that you guys do. Mel, thank you for coming in every other week, being our guest co-host. All our am other amazing guest co-hosts, our amazing guests like uh, Robert Scott Bell. Again, thank you so much for being here. And guys, check out his website. Again, it's robertscottbell.com. Check out his shows. You're going to love his shows. I've been really working on my mom to get on there and listen to what you have to share because um, I know she could definitely benefit from it because I've benefited from it. So check him out, listening to his shows. He goes live every single day, right? Monday mm -hmm. through Friday. Yep. Uh, three to five Eastern time, noon okay. to two Pacific. So get on and check it out. He has some amazing guests on there and um, you'll learn some stuff. So again, thank you, everyone. Greatly appreciate your time and your love and your support. And remember, addiction is giving up everything for one thing, and recovery is giving up one thing for everything. We're out.